Okay, so first video lecture. I'm going to try to keep these short uh, so they keep your attention. Uh, so five, ten minutes. Uh, my advice is you can obviously watch these again. Uh, my advice is to watch them once. Um, take some notes, maybe just watch it. Take some notes, work some problems, come back and look at it. Uh, and then um, take breaks. Okay, so one of the problems we have with class uh, is it's really long and your attention span can wander. So here you can sort of do little snippets. And I've already talked, what is that, like a minute? So take a break. Uh, that's not, yeah, that's a little over a minute even. Crap. So anyway, um, take a bit of a break. Uh, hit pause if you want. Go all, Always keep your attention on the video. Don't do other things in the background. No other windows open, that sort of thing. Okay, so chapter 21.1, I talked about this in class a little bit uh, before we left for spring break, uh, are enols. So if you've got a carbonyl compound, and this can be true of ketones, aldehydes, esters, amides, carboxylic acids, there's always, uh, there's always a uh, enol present in some small amount. Okay, so we're gonna lose, the chemistry in chapter 21 is gonna concern these alpha carbons. Okay, so that's, that's an alpha position, that's an alpha carbon, this is an alpha carbon. We're gonna name these gamma, delta, so on, and then uh, omega would be the end of the chain. So even if the end was here, we'd call that the omega carbon. So anyway, alpha carbons in chapter 21, when we're doing carbonyl chemistry, alpha carbons are the carbons bonded directly to the ketone. Uh, and if, the, if a ketone, or if a carbonyl compound has an alpha proton, then in solution, you've got some very small amount of enol present, and that you have to take account of that in uh, the reaction. So, and you can make all of the enols, okay? So an enol is called an enol because it's got an alkene and an alcohol. So you've got an OH directly bonded to uh, a carbon-carbon double bond. And again, uh, for most carbonyl compounds, this equilibrium constant is gonna be something like, uh, Q is going to be sort of on the order of 10 to the minus 10, something like that, give or take a couple orders of magnitude, depending on the structure. I'll, I'll, I'll show some exceptions before I sign off. Okay, so again, here, you've got a methyl group over here. If we, if we move one of the alpha protons up to the carbonyl oxygen, and that's not a mechanism, right? Like that, we'll have to go through the mechanism of how that happens. But if you move the alpha hydrogen up to this one, you can only make one enol, right? So there's two H's there, there's no stereochemistry around that alkene. That's a divalent, a 1,1 di, di substituted alkene. That's actually less stable than the one next to it. Uh, okay, so remember stereochemistry of alkenes, uh, if we do priorities on this carbon, oxygen's higher priority than carbon, so that's a one. Carbon's a higher priority than hydrogen, so that's a one. So this is a Z, out, uh, a Z enol. It's a tri-substituted enol. It's electron rich, it's got two alkyl substituents and an electron donating OH substituent. So that enol is, all these enols are electron rich. Uh, so that one's Z, and so that means this one is E. Uh, and it turns out in this case, the Z enol is a little more stable. OH is a little bit smaller than CH3, just a bit. Uh, because there's you know, that H can point away and none of these H's can. So if we were to, so the overall equilibrium between enol and ketone is 10 to the minus 10. That is you have about 10 to the 10th of these, about 10 billion of, of these for every set of these. But you have the most of the, this one and the least it's not all that important, but it will be when we start talking about enol chemistry. So the last thing I want to do is just show the mechanism of how we get there. So the, you can do this under either acid or base catalysis. Let's get some red into this. So the basic me mechanism. And now I'm just gonna I'm gonna take this down to just acetone. Let's just use acetone. All right. So under aqueous conditions, we have hydroxide. up 
here we make what's called an enolate. I'm going to do a enolate. I'm going to do a separate a little segment on enolates here in a minute. Um, you get the enolate and water, and there you go. You get your enol. Okay, and it's base catalyzed because you regenerate the OH. This is essentially a solvent-assisted proton transfer mechanism, right? So the hydroxide of the solvent shuttles that proton over. So even in neutral water, you have a little bit of hydroxide present. Um, so you, a, a compound can enolize in water. The acid catalyzed mechanism then looks like this. Okay, so now we don't have hydroxide, we have more hydronium. So we got to protonate first. Remember in these mechanisms, under acidic conditions, you're never going to have a strong base. So you're not going to add anything in. You're not going to make an enolate under acidic conditions. Um, you're going to keep everything protonated. We can make acids, but we can't make bases. Under basic conditions, the, the opposite is true. You don't want to have a strong acid around. Okay, so we protonate the ketone. Right, you can draw a resonance structure here. An important resonance structure where this is just a, a carbocation. Right, and now this looks like the last step of uh, an E1 elimination. So water is going to take that proton, keep the electrons there, and you regenerate H3O. Okay, here, if if you want to draw it from that resonance structure, and either is fine, you get that. Okay, so hit pause if you want, look through that, study it. Like I said, this is a nice, if you can draw these two mechanisms, you're going you're gonna to have a, a pretty good handle on the stuff coming next. Okay, so I'm going to raise, I'm going to cover this. So again, if you need this, hit pause. Uh, so like I said, almost always, the keto form is favored. So this is the keto form. And it doesn't have to be a, a carbon, it doesn't have to be a ketone for that to be the keto form. The keto form is just where you have a carbonyl, a carbon oxygen double bond. The enol form, you've got, uh, I guess I should say that, this is keto enol. And you have that equilibrium for pretty much any, carbo or any carbonyl derivative that's got alpha protons. The equilibrium constant changes some, so that there's more enol for an aldehyde, there's a lot less enol for a carboxylic acid, uh, but there's a little bit there. So exceptions, uh, so enols favored or close. So the, the simplest exception is, is one I think you'll see, right? So hit pause draw the enol of that carbonyl compound, and then come back. Seriously, hit pause and do that. Okay, so right now, the enol for this moves, you've only got, I should say this, you've got an alpha proton here, but you can't, you're not gonna get an SP, if you take this proton off, this is gonna become an SP hybridized carbon in a six-membered ring, you can't have that. So you've got to analyze here. If we move one of these protons up to the oxygen, move the double bond here. Again, that's not the mechanism, but that's how it would look. You get this, and this actually has enol in the name. Phenol. The molecule on the right is aromatic. The molecule on the left is not aromatic because there's two, there's an sp3 hybridized carbon there. So this is not a cyclic set of six pi electrons. So phenol is heavily favored. Right, this is big old line here, tiny little line that way. Really, there's not any of it. I mean, it's less than 10 to the 10 for, for this structure. Uh, the other time you'll see this uh, is with 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds. Okay, so again, hit pause. 
uh, go away and draw some enols for this, this molecule, and then come back. Okay, so the enol here, you might have, you might have said this, well, you know, there's an alpha proton, so the enol must be this. And that is an enol. But it doesn't form to any significant amount. And the reason is because if you, if you take off the protons here, you get a much better enol. And in fact, just a bit of a giveaway, the pKa here is about 10. Okay, so the enol that gets formed, yeah, alchemy. The enol that gets formed is this. All right, so a couple of things are true about this enol. This double bond now, the, al the alkene of the enol, is conjugated to the ketone, so that alkene's a little more stable than it you'd otherwise expect. And then very importantly, you get this intramolecular hydrogen bond. All right, so the OH can hydrogen bond to this oxygen in a six-membered ring, and that's very stable. And so this equilibrium, depending again, you know, what's bonded here, what's bonded there, what's bonded there. Uh, the K equilibrium here is usually between about 0.2 and 0.5. Okay, so there, even still, the diketo form, uh, you know what, let me check that. I think I have that, I have my equilibrium constant back. Yeah, I've got the equilibrium constant backwards. Equilibrium constant is this over that. And that's what I was that's what I was going for. There is usually more enol. Okay? So this is actually favored. Enols that are favored. So the equilibrium constant, there's gonna be a little more of this. So this will be like 80%, and this will be 20%. And again, any given molecule, remember what's going on with equilibrium. Equilibrium is molecules going back and forth. So these protons are just hopping around from the, 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 the carbon to the oxygen. You're getting this enol, you'll get the, the enol over here sometimes. So it's a dynamic situation. But at any given instant, you've got three or four more times uh, the, the enol than the diketo compound. Okay, so that's, that's enol chemistry. Um, I'm going to hit pause, or I'm going to hit stop now, and the next one I'll do will be enolates, which are kind of related.